Noel Marshall was an absolute madman. And by the end of this video, I'm sure you'd agree. Marshall had gained renown in Hollywood in the early 1970s as one of the co-producers of the famous film The Exorcist. And for most people, that's what Noel Marshall was famous for. But did you know he made one of the most absurd and completely heinous films ever made? Tiger King has nothing on this. Our story begins in 1969 in the African nation of Mozambique, where Marshall's wife, famed actress Tippi Hedren, grandmother of modern actress Dakota Johnson, was working on a movie called Satan's Harvest. While in Mozambique, Hedren and Marshall observed a pride of lions use a recently abandoned plantation house as a shelter to hide from poachers. They decided to make a movie based off of the lions, with Hedren later saying, it was an amazing thing to see. The lions were sitting in the windows. They were going in and out of the doors. They were sitting on the verandas. They were on top of the Portuguese house. It was such a unique thing to see. And we thought, for a movie, let us use the big cats as our stars. However, Hedron and Marshall's dream would soon turn into a nightmare. The pair discussed the film with their children, Melanie Griffith, Joel, John, and Jerry Marshall who were on board with the idea. Tippy and Noel talked to a number of lion experts who told them it was impossible to bring the number of lions they intended to bring together on set. They finally got their plan when trainer Ron Oxley brought one of his lions to the Marshall residence, where he suggested they buy lions, give them basic training, and introduce them to each other gradually. The Marshalls decided the film could be completed on a $3 million budget. Noel wrote the script for the film with the initial title of just Lions, then later changed it to Lions, Lions, and More Lions. The original script only called for 30 to 40 lions. It was intended to be a mixture of comedy and drama, with some scenes invoking horror, but underlying with the message of preserving Africa's wildlife. In some scenes, the actors were required to act scared to trigger responses from the lions, and due to their spontaneous actions, some of the lions were even credited as writers themselves. Noel and Tippy began to acquire lions from zoos and circuses, keeping them at their house in the Sherman Oaks neighborhood of Los Angeles. In 1972, the authorities figured out about the animals and ordered the family to remove them from the property to which Marshall and Hedron complied. They bought land in Soledad Canyon in Los Angeles County, building a two-story reinforced house inspired by African architecture. The surrounding land was also altered to resemble Tanzania more than California. Other buildings in the pair's compound included a kitchen, an animal hospital, an elephant barn, and a 10,000-pound freezer to store meat for the cats. Neat. Marshall decided to change the movie's name to Roar after acquiring two Siberian tigers and an African bull elephant named Timbo, altering the script to include more animals. By 1979, the family had 71 lions, 26 tigers, a tigon, 9 black panthers, 10 cougars, 2 jaguars, 4 leopards, 2 elephants, 6 black swans, 4 Canadian geese, 4 cranes, 7 flamingos, 2 peacocks, and a marabou stork only refusing to buy a hippopotamus. Funding issues began in 1973, and the cost to pay the crew and feed the animals was around $4,000 a week. Marshall sold four houses and 600 acres near Six Flags Magic Mountain to pay his debts, and his production company went bankrupt. Marshall began using the money he got from The Exorcist to pay for the film. Tippy also sold possessions, including a fur coat Alfred Hitchcock had given her while filming The Birds. When asked why he took so many personal risks in 1977, Noel replied, You get into anything slowly. We have been on this project now for five years. Everything we own, everything we have achieved, is tied up in it. We're at a point where we just have to do it. John Marshall one of Noel's sons acted as animal wrangler and veterinarian, 
giving vaccines to the animals, which were plagued by airborne diseases. Around 14 lions and tigers died of disease in the decade of filming. Filming began on October 1st, 1976, but the crew could only film five months at a time because the cottonwood trees turned brown from November until March. The cameraman, John DeBont, often had to set up multiple cameras, filming the untrained lions all day, with often only one shot being usable. But all this pales before the onset injuries. Marshall was bitten through his hand while shooting a scene. Another time, he suffered eight puncture wounds on his leg by a lion who wondered what his makeup tasted like by which time he had already been bitten on 11 different occasions. Marshall got bit so much that he eventually got blood poisoning and gangrene. In 1973, Hedron was bitten on the head by a lion named Cherries, whose teeth scraped her skull. Hedron was given stitches and a tetanus shot. Another time, Hedron was riding the elephant Timbo when it grabbed her by her ankle, breaking it, and bucked her off, fracturing her hand. Hedron got gangrene from this. A few days earlier, Timbo had bucked his trainer, Patricia Barbeo, into a tree, breaking her shoulder. Hedron was also scratched on the arm by a leopard and bitten on the chest by a cougar. Melanie Griffith received 50 stitches after a lion scratched her face. It was initially feared she'd lose an eye, but she recovered without disfigurement. John Marshall was bitten on the back of his head and required 56 stitches, while Jerry was bitten on the thigh. John DeBont was scalped by cherries, requiring 220 stitches and returning to the set to finish the movie. He's the MVP. Assistant Director Doran Cowper was bit in the throat and jaw by one of the lead lions, Togar, who also tried to rip Cowper's ear off. He required four and a half hours of surgery, but survived, after which 20 staff members walked off set. It seems the staff at the local hospitals were getting good at treating lion maulings at this point. On February 9th, 1978, a 10-foot high flash flood swept through the canyon. Noel was in the hospital reportedly awaiting knee surgery, but left to help rescue the animals, reportedly hopping around on one leg. Along with the animals, four sound crew members also had to be rescued. Fifteen lions escaped from the set, with law enforcement killing three, including the lead lion, Robbie. Just imagine being a cop on a normal peaceful patrol, when all of a sudden, a freaking lion is walking across the road in front of you. I mean, it's also L.A., so you'd probably just say, stranger things have happened, and not even bother. The flood caused over $3 million in damage. Many people offered to help the marshals, with the Southern Pacific Railroad Company, who was remarkably still a thing, donating rail cars for temporary animal housing. It took eight months to rebuild the set, but then 12 wildfires broke out in the region. But luckily, the set was spared, this time. Filming wrapped on October 16, 1979, with additional shots done in Kenya during editing. It took 11 years in total to develop the movie, with Roar releasing in February of 1981, but not in the United States, where, as Hedron stated, distributors wanted the quote, lion's share of the money, which Marshall and Hedron intended to use to care for the animals featured. Although crew members say the film wasn't released in the U.S. because the crew wasn't unionized. Roar was re-released in the United States in 2015. The movie was a failure, only bringing in $2 million of its $17 million budget. The re-release only grossed $110,048. Roar was Noel Marshall and Tippi Hedren's passion project but it ruined the family. The couple divorced a year after the movie's release in 1982, with Hedron stating Marshall consistently became aggressive when they fought, eventually getting a restraining order against him, calling for Marshall to get psychiatric care. 
Marshall's son, John, recalled Marshall's abusive treatment of Hedron's daughter, Melanie Griffith, on set. John stated the cast had safe words for if they felt the scene was too dangerous, but Noel disregarded Melanie when she said hers. Noel Marshall died in 2010 of cancer. In 1983, Tippi Hedren turned a set into an animal preserve called the Shambhala Preserve where she and expert handlers cared for the animals in the film alongside others, making sure there is minimal human contact. At 92 years old, Hedron still maintains the preserve, with her granddaughter, Dakota Johnson, even being involved in their care. Hedron turned the legacy of the most dangerous movie ever made into one of animal conservation, never taking her mind off of her initial goal. The events surrounding the filming of Roar have been lumped in as part of the quote, Exorcist Curse, where misfortune followed everyone who worked on that film. It is estimated that somewhere between 70 and 100 crew members were injured on the set of Roar, but surprisingly, no people died. However, up to 17 animals died, due to airborne illnesses and California police. Truly, Roar lives up to its nickname as the most dangerous movie ever made. Thanks for watching.